All right, first of all, I would recommend just right off the bat, pausing this video and copying down these notes. So that way you're not having to write, keep looking up, copying and trying to listen to me. That's the beauty of this. You can pause it, go at your own pace. So copy it down while it's paused, table of contents, lines of fit, page 61, page 61 in the bottom right, put the date, lines of fit. I know seventh period, I'm off a page for you guys. Do the definition, put the table, start the graph. All right, if you wanna be even more baller, you can actually graph these points. If not, then just resume once we're back. All right, so now if you're watching this, you should have already copied this down. If not, you are not doing as you're told to. Lines of fit. I forgot the standard to write. It is 8 SP 1.1, 1.2, and 1.3. So we are still doing the same learning goal. We're focusing on it all week. All right, so what we are doing for the learning goal, we're still investigating patterns of association between bivariate data. In your own words, what does that mean? Investigate your analyzing, your Nancy Drew, okay? You're going on a, miss, a mission. Patterns of association, relationships between data that shows two variables, X and Y chart, X and Y table, X and Y axis, two different variables. So if you watched yesterday's video on scatter plots, we talked a little bit actually about the lines of fit. I know it as lines of best fit. Sometimes people just say lines of fit. And we actually kind of drew it in our graph. We drew the lines that were going through the scatter plot. So kind of, you're already ahead. See, we, those are all lines of fit, lines of best fit. All it is, really, really easy and straightforward. The first half of this week, I feel like the topics are easier to grasp. Later on this week, I feel like they're a bit more difficult. Um, it's just, it's not as common sense. You really actually have to watch the video, pay attention, learn it. Not saying don't watch the video. It's not what I was saying. All right, line of best fit. It's literally, it's so literal. It's a line that fits best. It's a line drawn on a scatter plot, okay? The plot with all the dots through most of the data points. It's just used as an estimate. It's a guess, it's a guesstimate, okay? So first we're gonna actually create one. So we have this table, it gives us months, and then it gives us depth, all right? The depth is in feet. So at zero months, it was 20 feet. At one month, it was 19 feet. Guys, these are just your coordinates that you're gonna graph. This is our X, this is our Y. So let's label it to make it easier. I chose just to go by twos, um, just because I saw it went up to 20. You could technically do a little squiggly line that shows that you have a break if like it didn't start until high up, but we don't have them starting wicked high up. And then I did the X axis by ones. You can do the X and Y axes by different scales where like this one's going by ones, this one's going by two, but as long as you're consistent on that axis. So the X axis, it's months. Okay, and then the y-axis is depth in feet. So try plotting these points on your own. Practice plotting. You guys haven't plotted in a hot minute, so let's do it. Let's do it together, but try it on your own. Zero, 20. So it's zero months, okay? That's literally just zero, zero right here. But the depth is 20 feet. So it's up here. Zero for the x, 20 for the y. 119, so we go over one, up 19. Obviously it's easier with graph paper, but it is, it is what it is. If you have graph paper, feel free to do it on the graph paper. 215, 2, 15, 313, 411, 510, Six, eight, my friend's dad is six, eight. He's six feet, eight inches tall. Where's eight? Oh my goodness, Miss Fry, what are you doing? Seven, 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 heaven, seven, seven, eight, five. All right, so we just created a scatter plot. 
No, they're not all over the place, and that's okay. Sometimes they won't be. And we could have one that had, you know, more dots all over the place, and that's fine. Still, the line of best fit, it means it's the line that fits the best. It goes through most of the points. So you just kind of get a sheet of paper, and you just kind of line it up and see, like, hmm, that covers too many. This dot doesn't cover enough, so right there it seems like I go through a lot of them, I think. You just kind of eyeball it. You, you guess. You're estimating. It doesn't have to be perfect. And your line might be different than my line. Oh, that means my line's not going to be on the paper. Yep, what do you know? Oops. Oops, oops, oops. Let's fray. All right, guys, see? It's ugly. There we go. It's a, it's a thick line. It's thick. Okay, so that's my line of best fit. My line of fit. All right. Think about it. Scatter plots. What type of relationship is this? Is it a linear relationship or is it non-linear? Okay, if it's non-linear, it's not going to be able to form a line of fit. It's not going to be able to form a straight line. So, if you're up here, you're running down it. It has a negative slope. It has a decreasing slope. So, the relationship is called, and I flipped back to yesterday's notes because you can do that. Right, which graph does it look like? Ding, ding, ding. The line just goes down and it's straight. So it's a negative linear relationship. Negative linear, because it creates a line relationship. Oh, it's hot in here. Okay. I lost my train of thought. Um, all right. So we actually, guys, I know, I know it's your favorite thing to do. We can write an equation for this line immediately, immediately, immediately. What equation comes to your mind when we talk about a straight line, straight line, slope intercept form, straight line, y equals mx plus b. I'm sure a handful of you just rolled your eyes y equals mx plus b. All right, let's talk about it again. b. b is our y-intercept. When do we go through the y-axis? That's the y-intercept. When do we intersect the y-axis? At 20. Okay, it's when our x value is 0. So b is 20, positive 20. Okay, we keep the y. We keep the x, now we just need to fill in the slope. So, guys, this line is not gonna be perfect. It's not a perfectly straight line. How can we find the slope? Okay, one way is you can pick two dots on the graph. So we can pick 0, 20, this one, and we can pick 6, 8. All right, guys, remember slope. Change in y over change in x. Slope, m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. How much does the y change as the x changes? So slope, m equals y2 minus y1. You can do 20 minus 8, or you can do 8 minus 20. It does not matter the order as long as you don't change it. So I'm going to do 20 minus 8. But if I do 20 minus 8, then I have to do that same order for the x. So 0 minus 6. 20 minus 8 is 12. 0 minus 6 is negative 6. 12 divided by 6 is 2. Positive divided by a negative is a negative. So the slope is negative 2. M equals negative two. Okay, Ms. Stevens and I are doing the same problem in her notes. Okay, her line of best fit was different and her slope was negative one. It's just an eyeball, it's just an estimate. So this would be an equation for our line of best fit. Because if you look at it, the slope is negative two, that means we're going down two over one, down two over one roughly, and the y-intercept is at 20. 
all right? Y-intercept. So the y-intercept's at 20. What does that mean? How can you interpret it? If the problem said interpret the y-intercept, inter, in, I was going to say intercept, interpret, oh my gosh, I was so focused on the spelling of interpret that I just wrote TT twice. Interpret the y-intercept and the slope of the line of best fit or line of fit. So we have to interpret the y-intercept and the slope of this line. All right, so on your own right now, what does this y-intercept mean? What does the y-intercept mean? The y-intercept. Our y-intercept is right here, 0, 20. So that's when it's on the y-axis. If it helps you label it y and x. So our y-intercept of 0, 20, what does that mean? What well, means, guys, at zero months, that's our x axis, the x axis is months. At zero months, it was 20 feet deep. It had a depth of 20 feet. So, I don't know if this is a pool or a river, but at zero months, say the river, the river was 20 feet deep. Okay. Another way you could have said that you could have said the river started at 20 feet deep because it's zero months. That means no time pass. So it's the beginning. It's the start. The river started at 20 feet. Oh my goodness. I'm so sorry. So that's the Y intercept, the Y intercept. 0, 20, 0 months, 20 feet for the depth. Okay, the slope. So our slope was the negative 2. Slope, rise over run. So our slope was negative 2. So we rose or fell 2 and we run 1. Because it's technically, it's rise over run, so it's negative 2 over 1. Rise over over run. So that means we rise negative two. So we fall two, we run, we go right one. We fall two, we run one. We fall two, we run one. We're falling to what? We're falling to, well, what's the y-axis? Depth, feet. So we're, we're, as we drop two feet, as the depth decreases or drops two feet, one month went by. So we dropped two feet, one month went by. So every month, we're dropping about two feet of water. That's what the slope means. So as we drop two feet, we run one month. So each month, each one month, each month, the river, the river's depth, decreases decreases to feet. So slope has both months and the depth, just like the y-intercept. It's bivariate. It's two variables. It's the months and the depth. So each month, because one, the x is the um, months, the river set decreases, it drops two feet. Okay, so this is just practicing interpreting it. All right, there's one more type of problem I wanted to do with you. So if you have this drawn, then flip over your notebook, or maybe you still have room. I'm going to flip it over because I clearly do not have room. So the last one I want to draw, and we're not going to do a full table and everything, every, everything, we're just going to do, um, just a rough sketch. 
So just do your y and x-axis. Oh, that's beautiful. I can't even stay on the line. Okay. And then don't even bother labeling them. We're just going to put lots of dots. Okay, so what would you say about this? What type of relationship is this? Would you say no relationship? Or would you say nonlinear? Can you kind of draw a line? Do you see a pattern through this? Okay, I see this pattern. It's kind of like a hill. So I say it's a nonlinear because it's not a straight line, but there is a relationship. So it's a nonlinear relationship. Oh, my bad. So if we're putting a line of best fit, it would have to be like that. If they gave you different options and one was right here and then we had should have drawn that arrow at the end. One like this. And then we had one like this. Because those are different parts of our graph. We go up, then we go over, then we go down. None of these are the line of best fit. Because the line of best fit goes through all of them. So you cannot just pick one of them. The pink one is the line of best fit. That's what I want to stress. Pink equals line of best fit or line of fit. The other three leave out too much of the information. The green one looks like it just keeps increasing forever and going up like it's a positive linear relationship. No, it doesn't. The blue one, although it does decrease here, it doesn't keep decreasing all the way over here. So that's a false impression as well. And the brown one looks like it's just going straight up sideways which also isn't the case. So be careful when you're doing your Khan Academy that the line, or even when you're doing future problems, that the line truly shows the whole picture. It paints the whole picture. So if it's a curve or a nonlinear relationship, if it's just a straight line going off the graph, that's not gonna represent that. So hopefully after this, you guys feel much more confident about scatter plots and lines of best fit. Um, yeah, I don't think I have anything else to say. All right, later.